GHKCU serum is one of the most widely used peptides out there, and for good reason. In studies, it's been shown to boost type 1 and type 3 collagen by up to 70%. Over the years, I've used a 1% formula, and I have noticed a difference with it flattening out my frown lines, but recently, I've mixed up my own 4% version, and the change in potency is noticeable, so I'm gonna go into how I've mixed up together. But first of all, I wanna cover GHKCU and all its general health benefits. As I just mentioned, it's one of the most potent inducers of collagen synthesis in the skin. It enhances decorin, elastin, glycosaminoglycans, proteoglycans, which are all crucial for skin barrier integrity. It promotes dermal fibroblast proliferation and migration, and I'll get onto this in my own personal findings. And it's been identified to affect gene modulation in over 4,000 genes. One study back in 2012 found that uh, it upregulated 59% of repair genes and regeneration genes whereas it downregulated 41% of pro-inflammatory and senescent ones. It makes GHKCU a true anti-aging peptide, not just some cosmetic you're putting on your skin. And diving into it further still, it upregulates antioxidant enzymes, so it can directly scavenge free radicals, reducing reactive oxygen species damage, for example, superoxide dismutase, and this steadily goes down in your 30s, leading to you know, skin barrier degradation. And that's why often people don't really notice it until you see a photo of you 10 years apart, and see if you're 35 versus 25 and you don't really notice year on year changes but then when you see an old photo of you instantly you know that's 10 years old because you can just see those very subtle changes in your skin it's a little bit like gaining weight when people gain a pound of fat per year you don't notice it until 10 years down the line it also inhibits nf kappa b your inflammatory signaling pathway down regulating cytokines like tnf alpha and il6 and so this can actually help with SASPs, which stands for senescence associated secretory phenotype. And the good analogy is when you've got senescent cells, they're like rotten apples and then they make the other apples go bad. It can also help reduce glycation induced damage. And the side effect of high glycation in the skin is things like skin tags. I'm quite lucky I've got a slower glycation gene. Although I've got average aging skin genetics, it has protected me over the years because I have had like big fluctuations in my blood glucose. It also protects against UV and pollution damage. So in the summer, that's a good time to use the GHKCU. So to sum it up, it's not a true senolytic, but it does encourage cell cycle re-entry in pre-senescent fibroblasts. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. As I alluded to before, it supports DNA repair enzymes as well as telomere maintenance pathways, you know, those caps on the end of your chromosomes. It also stimulates angiogenesis, the formation of new blood vessels, improving circulation in the skin. So this all equates to a healthier, fresher looking at skin complexion. And then so on that subject, so GHKCU, we've established, I could go into depth about all those uh, skin health benefits, but we've established it's one, the, the, one of the most powerful interventions you can do for collagen production. So when I mentioned about having a 1% serum, that's been stored for a long time that this does mean that people do get a good response to it but if you're not doing all the other things with that when you're using one of these one percent formulas that have been stored for a long time you don't know how long and that means some people report having lukewarm results with ghkcu so if you're drinking alcohol uh, getting a lot of sun exposure maybe um, your glucose isn't ideal and then you're using a, like a weaker formula, 1% multi-peptide serum maybe. As that's another factor to take into account. Topical peptides can compete for skin barrier associated transporters like PEPT1 and PEPT2, as well as CATs, cationic amino acid transporters. And that's the reason why I was so interested in mixing my own 4% GHKCU serum. I talked about it in a recent video as well as uh, I was talking about my skin metrics, how my skin barrier integrity went a little bit thinner. I was using too much glycolic acid as, as well as over exfoliating my skin, leading to slightly more redness. I did touch on doing microneedling up until recently. I, I mentioned I only do it one to two times a year because my skin goes red and then I can't record for five days, maybe even more in the past. 
and I recently did another session of micro needling and my skin actually, I noticed it actually healed a little bit quicker. Now I'm using the 4% stuff. And on top of that, I've only been using it up in, in the evening recently. And I'm also noticing an immediate skin tightening effect. So pretty much immediate skin tightening effect would be due to the uh, water retention in the extracellular matrix, as well as increased glycos amino glycan synthesis. And you got to factor in that I'm using hyaluronic acid as a vehicle, so that can actually work well by increasing skin permeability. It's possible that the hyaluronic acid also has a slight hydrating effect. I mean, it is a large molecule. That's why I generally I take it orally. And the one I get is from Primark, so it's a well-known brand, but very, very cheap. And I wouldn't normally, I wouldn't buy moisturizer from them because they, they've got preservatives in, I've got sensitive skin, but on with hyaluronic acid, it being two pounds, there, there isn't any nasties added with it. As I demonstrated in the video, it's literally a matter of seconds mixing up your own peptide serum. So mine was 25 mil and one gram of GHKCU. And it just works out so much cheaper by mixing your own. And then you haven't got the worry of how long has it been stored at room temperature. As of course, once reconstituted, those copper ions become a lot less stable. That's why you put it straight in the fridge. So moving forward, I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on my skin metrics, comparing it head to head, this 4% serum versus the, uh, the ordinary multi-peptide serum. So I'm gonna be running this uh, 4% stuff for three months on, one month off, because obviously, you can use topical peptides long term because it's not building up systemically, but the difference is with copper that can build up. And so especially if you're using a 4% one, so it's quite strong. So I'm gonna, by doing it three months off, one month off, then I can just let things normalize. And then in that period, that time off, that, that's why I'm thinking to use Matrixol 3000, which is in the copper peptide, the multi-peptide serum from the ordinary. The difference is that it's not as powerful for, as a, it's a more of a moderate collagen booster. It kind of hits the upper and mid dermis, whereas GHKCU gets deeper in it and obviously helps with elastin as well. On top of that, I'm thinking to buy a Giraline, that third peptide in that uh, multi-peptide ordinary serum, buy that separately and run that long term. So it works off this snare complex, it's a natural muscle relaxant. And what I can do is first thing in the morning, apply my 4% GHKCU and then wait five to 10 minutes to let my skin, the pH normalize, let that uh, copper tripeptide really permeate deep and then apply their giraline as well. And because my skin appears to be healing that little bit quicker with this 4% GHKCU formula, I can maybe uh, do it more frequently than microneedling, maybe up to one, uh, three times every year. So every four months, once I've, you know, during those cycles that I'm doing at the GHKCU. So buying both Matrixel 3000 and a giraline, separately rather than in a multi-peptide serum isn't the most cost-effective way of doing it, but I think it is the most uh, efficacious way of doing it. And then by mixing your own multi 4% uh, serum, GHKCU serum, that is a cost-effective way of doing it rather than buying it. And then uh, you do pay a premium for that. And I get mine from Peptides of London, very high-end peptides, you know, the clinical grade they even used in by Brunel University in a groundbreaking study with the peptide Epitalon. So it works out to 50 pounds with my discount code and then what, two pounds for hyaluronic acid. So not that dear, especially it depends on how long this serum lasts. I've noticed that I can get away with using a bit less than with the ordinary. It's not, it doesn't come out. Uh, the ordinary it tends to come out in quite big amounts whereas I can actually spread this a little bit uh, easier. For me, that multi-peptide serum would last five to six weeks. I'm thinking similar or like six weeks because it is slightly smaller rather than being 30 ml, it's 25. So yeah, I think six weeks is feasible with this. So if you like that video, then check out this one on SKQ1 gel. It's a potent antioxidant that gets the root cause of reactive oxygen species in the mitochondria, also has hydrating effects as well as demonstrated by my before and after skin results. Thanks for watching, see you next time.